What's going on YouTube? Clay Gizzle back again with another Final Fantasy Brave XVS banner review and today we're reviewing Star Ocean and we just had some fantastic news hit us coming out of uh, the banner. It's been updated in the game so I'm going to show you a picture of it right here and then I'm going to try to like highlight with a little arrow where it says it. These units will be getting seven stars. Fate and Reina will be getting, uh, seven, Reina, sorry, will be getting seven stars in the future, so yay! That means you can summon a lot more, uh, with a lot more oomph, and a lot more, um, vigor when it comes to summoning on this banner, and be happy that at least if you get two of them, or, you know, you get one in the future, you can maybe make that a seven star, uh, because it's limited time banner. Remember, this is a limited time banner, so when pulling on this, be aware of that. So without further ado, let's get into the first unit. Uh, Remy is going to be the free uh, unit that you guys are going to be able to get through doing the raid summons. Not really the best unit in the world as far as what she can do. She doesn't bring much craziness to the table. She can hang out with Waka and that bird killer and Tidus, I guess. But the good thing about her is her trust mastery, which is Seed of Hope. Which is absolutely not as insane as I originally thought it would be. Uh, because I thought power creep was coming, baby. I thought this was 100% to all status summon resist. It is 50%, but it is stackable. So you want to farm multiples of these. You can throw them on people like Wilhelm, uh, that already has 50% resist to all elements. You throw this one that's 100%, bada bing, bada boom, gives you some HP. You can throw two on someone. If you don't have ribbons, if you're new to the game, you don't have discernments, you don't have ways of getting rid of all those status elements, which you'll need in the future, I'd farm it, two of these for each of your units you're going to have in your party. Very, very good TMR, something you guys get for free. That's awesome. Next up, we have Roddick, which apparently that's a cat tail and not a monkey tail. And I'm sorry, I've never played with Roddick before. Also, I'm used to Sans, uh, you know, Goku and all of them having the monkey tails. And for me, that kind of looks like a monkey tail. But he's a physical damage dealer uh, going from 3 star to 5 star base, meaning he's not going to be dishing out that much damage. Uh, we do have a great trust mastery, though, in Millie's Charm. Uh, we get a couple of stats. We get HP 10%, MP 10%, and then we have a whole bunch of elemental resist. And as you guys know, fighting these espers, fighting these magic resist fights, that can be key in reaching these certain numbers you guys need when it comes to uh, actually having your magic AoE cover tanks be elemental resist so very very good tmr you're going to be able to farm it up in the uh raid that they're th these are going to be with so i definitely try to get a couple of erotics at least even if even if you're not pulling to like to get the five stars i'd pull for a couple of erotics to try to get a couple of these tmrs to have in your back pocket all right uh, again, we're going to look down at Roddick. We're not going to spend too much time here. There really isn't anything here to be super crazy excited about uh, or worry about anyway. So we're going to skip over him. Uh, Roddick is a very cool looking sprite. They did a very great job with all of these sprites when it comes to this uh, collapse. So I'm very proud of that at least. Then we have Fidel. Fidel is going to be a 4-star going up 6-star physical attacker. These are like some of the main characters, I guess, from the Star Ocean games. And they're all going to be wielding swords and doing damage. Um, he uh, has a Trust Mastery called uh, Fortitude and Vigor. This is going to be the first Trust Mastery where I say it's not really that great. Uh, increase attack 40%. Now, you may need this on your team later on. Uh, you do get it through TMR. Uh, again, I want to keep bringing this up. The Raid, you should be able to get the Moogles and get it. The auto buffs defense is nothing. Nothing to be too excited about. So don't worry about that. But the increase attack 40% is pretty good, uh, but nothing spectacular, right? Nothing, oh wow, I have to have it, so don't worry about that too much. If we go down through um, his abilities, we can see here that he does get Air Raid. And Air Raid is essentially the exact same chaining move that we're going to see on our boy Fate uh, later on when we look at him. That's going to be his big move as well. It is a 7 times, it has been globally buffed to a 7 times chaining ability. So if you take 3.5 times, times about 2, 7 times, that is a huge number. The problem being is it doesn't imperil anything, right? Like, normally normally the chaining moves imperil, and that, you know, that's just a little bit. You could be like, Clay, calm down, that, you know, it's a seven times move, four star base unit, that's amazing. However, check out what I just put on the screen. Those are his chaining frames. Essentially, him and Fate. So he can chain with himself, he can chain with Fate, kind of. It still breaks. There is no spark chaining this. There is no... It, it is, like, impossible to chain even with themselves. They ain't chaining with anyone else. They should have... If they wanted to buff these units, the uh, the the actual damage modifier being up is great, but they really needed to give us the ability to chain. Again, especially at this point in the game, it's all about chaining. Those bosses need to be chained down, and you can't actually do it with this ability. So, essentially, what it does is it takes a unit that could have been very good and very useful for people at 4-star and makes them almost impossible to use. So... That's just something to look out for there. Uh, that ability will look very, very great to you. But again, thinking about those numbers, it's like, I mean, I could tell, I was telling, I was talking to somebody else on my Discord. I was like, I could type random numbers too and make it their fr chaining frames. It's really hard. It, it's, you remember how Titus was supposed to be hard, and he was. Uh, this is going to be even more rough on you. So, sorry, uh, Fidel, you're not going to be able to get there and do the damage you really could have done. 
Moving on to our first five star base on the banner, that is Fate, my boy, the guy I remember from my Star Ocean that I've played. Physical attacker, five star base going up to six star. However, they did him wrong, chat. We're gonna figure this out, YouTube. They did us wrong. They didn't. Oh my gosh, they just. They had so much potential in Fate and they threw it all away. So his Trust Mastery is Farewell. It is a sword, so not a great sword, that has the light element attached to it. 135 attack, which is massive. But do remember that a lot of people out there who were using these great swords one do have great sword masteries in their kit. Um, a lot of our TMRs have great sword, uh, you know, mastery or using a great sword, large sword, uh, as a passive on them. So this is going to be a very niche in a way sword because you're going to want to use it on people who have sword passives. Um, but it also is very high light attack. So it, I think it's good to have in your, uh, you know, in your TMR uh, kit for later days, or maybe you might need it. Uh, but it's not a great sword. So it's it's so the higher end uh, people who imperil light and then use it aren't really going to be using this weapon uh, exactly. But let's go ahead and look down at what fate has to offer. The first thing I want to point out is he cannot equip throwing weapons. They really should have given him throwing weapons, guys. Fixed dice on this guy could have been amazing. There there are several reasons why it's it, it's kind of uh, all messed up. All right, so he doesn't have throwing weapons. The reason I bring this up is that he can put fire, ice, lightning, and light. Uh, onto his weapon for 12 turns, along with filling up his limit burst uh, gauge, which we'll talk about that here in a minute. Which would have been amazing to do with a fixed ice user, right? Because fixed ice doesn't have an element on it. If you could put an element on it, we could start doing mad damage uh, along with imperil and then uh, the elemental chaining. However, they didn't give him that. I think that's something they could have changed. I just don't know how more it would have made him pretty powerful uh, if they did that. So. His first ability, Blade of Fury, physical damage four times with consecutive uh, increases 24 times. You have to cast this boy 24 times in order to, it's going to take like 12 turns if you dual, you know, the dual wield procs uh, that many times. 0 0.5 times each to a 16 max we can see here that he gets to all enemies. So this move was one of the ones they globally buffed. Now I'm not saying it's terrible, but let's think about it for a minute. What, what does that move look like to you guys before you look at the hits? It looks like a finishing move, right? We're going to build this thing up and we're going to do a finishing move. However, it hits five times. So it's going to be extremely difficult to finish with Blade of Fury. I think they missed the mark with this ability. Uh, I just think overall Fate had a cool design and then they just messed it up. They, did, they didn't deliver in the end. They, they, I don't know if they didn't test him when, he, when they made him or what, but he doesn't seem like he works, right? Uh, next up, he has an ability that he can do a little bit of damage and then also get some MP back. Again, we've mentioned all the abilities to uh, add a, an element to his attacks and then also uh, put up his limit burst gauge. He has Abyssal Gate, which is AoE, and then one single target hits. Uh, hits three times in one. And then we have Air Raid, which we've already discussed at how messed up this ability is for this game. This, this just doesn't work in this game, right? The game, the game works on chaining. The game works on perfect chaining. People like to spark chain to get the most damage out of their units. And you're not going to be able to do it with my boy Fate. They just didn't give him... They just didn't... They should have fixed the, 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 uh, the, the, the chaining frames on Air Raid. Hey, we saw what happened with Kane, though, right? Am I right? Like, yeah, they, they fixed that, right? I, 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 it's, it's not, you know, they didn't have to do this because it wasn't in JP, but that would have been a way to actually make him better than just adding some damage to something that isn't going to be doing that much damage anyway because you're not going to be chaining it correctly, if you understand what I'm saying. Moving on down, we're going to go into his passives. He has Stubborn to a Fault. Essentially, if he falls below 60% HP, 60% to his attack, 60% to his defense. If he falls below 30% of HP, he's buffing himself by 120% attack and 120% defense, and that may be more than what you're able to buff your own team so that's pretty good to have that as a passive next up he has condition cure and this is an ability that i am um you know i am not a hundred percent sure if i'm correct on this so first off it increases resist to poison blind sleep silence paralyze and confuse right so very very good lots of status elements he's resist to but it does mention that he uses this at the start of battle so I i'm worried that that means he cast it on himself and if he were to die and come back since he won't cast it because it's not the start of battle he will no longer be resist to those which i think is bad like that's it he should just be resist to those like i i, I think that's a way of nerfing it i guess or keeping it in check but if he would die, does that mean he doesn't get that anymore? That, that makes him even a little bit more worse with that. He has a chance to counter physical attacks 25% with uh, convert damage. That's probably never going to proc, really. You're going to be covering him up and things like that. Uh, it may proc every once in a while, but it's just really not that big of a deal. 
Uh, increased attack and defense 30% and HP 20%. Uh, and then he has self-taught swordsman, and then he also has a uh, sword passive, sword master right there with that. Now, speaking of his limit burst, remember how I said it'd be nice if they put some true double hand in there in his passives, and then allowed him to be able to wield uh, weapons because he can decrease all elemental resist by 60%. So even at base, he decreases all, he imperils by 60% to all enemies for three turns. And he does do some damage here, and I, I, I wouldn't recommend leveling it up if uh, you're going to be wondering about that. However, like, so overall, what do I get Fate the way he is now? He, he's, 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 he's not very good. He's not very good unit. He's not going to get you where you want to be. Uh, because you can't, you just can't chain with him. Like, he's not going to do what he, what, what he's intended to do, which is put an element on, on himself, put a big sword on himself, and then chain up with air raid. But he's not going to be able to do that. Uh, one, because this is a limited time banner, so you're not going to find many Fate or Fidel on your friend list months after this. And two, he chains with literally no one else. And three... He can't even really chain with himself, so it doesn't even matter. So, again, it would have been fixed if this chained, if he could have a throwing weapon, and they gave him some true double hand, the guy would have been a monster. He would have been a monster unit, but they didn't do that. So, overall, Fate's just not going to be worth pulling on. And even if we get seven stars, they're going to have to fix some of this crap or give him an ability that does chain, or he, even then he can't really be fixed, in my opinion. So, that, that's, that's my thing on Fate. I'm sorry, buddy. I still want you in my unit box, but... You just, they disappointed me with him. Last but not least, we have Rena, our five star base going to six star healer. I think the best unit that we actually have on this banner by far. Rena is going to be a very, very good healer for you guys out there who do not have Ayaka and who not have, do not have CG Fina. All right, so let's go down to Trust Mastery, Knuckles of Hope. So this is where our first global buff is actually going to come in on Rena. This used to be an attack and spirit equally split around about 70, uh, but they decided, hey, if you're going to be using this on healers like it's intended to on Rena or people who would have spirit scaling, uh, we just want to put a lot of spirit on there. So they got rid of most of the attack. They have a little bit on there because it, it is a knuckle uh, weapon, and they added a lot more spirit, which is awesome. You also get MP 30%, which is great to have on a healer, and auto refresh, which is another th great thing to have on a healer or a support unit. Now, you can throw this on any unit uh, that is a healer just by throwing on grappling hands or whatever equipped fist uh, that you guys have and throwing that on there and it'll be really great on him. Uh, a couple of other units, Leela is going to like it a lot. Uh, she has passives that she gets from using fist weapons, so she's going to give a little bit more survivability and... Uh, I think it's going to be very, very good on her. And then also Awaken Rain is an option. Now, I do know that you guys want to put Crimson Saber in Awaken Rain's hand. But let me tell you, I've been using him a lot. And his damage is actually really good. So adding more spirits, having survive a little bit more in the... Uh magic damage ways, which is what he tanks. We're, we are sacrificing a little bit of HP, but we're giving him more spirit, and add that spirit for more damage. I'm kind of down with that. He's already a tanky beast to begin with. Maybe he doesn't even need that HP. Um, overall, this isn't something you absolutely have to have, but a very, 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 very good TMR when it comes to healers and the units I've just talked about. So let's move down to her kit. So the first thing I want to announce before I do any of this is this passive down here. Hasten speech. Reyna can use two skills, uh, can use her skills twice in a turn, except for silence. So silence right here, let's talk about that, nullifies the next spell cast for one turn. So uh, that's going to be similar to the uh, Sealing Blade with Celeste. You're going to be able to cast it anytime you want to, you just can't cast, cast it twice in a turn, which makes sense. Uh, it doesn't cover, you know, you guys have been through the whole thing where it doesn't cover a lot of the different magic spells, but sometimes it does work. I actually have used it, uh, in the, I use it in the Bron Bronchiosaur fight, the new one, uh, where it's just a recolored version of him a little bit harder. I did use it in that fight, so it was useful. Uh, next up, she has a couple of abilities that are based off of spirit. She has laser beams, and then she has star flare. Uh, Starflare being the harder hitting one, so we'll talk about that. Light magic damage 6.6 .6 times with spirit scaling to all enemies. Uh, that's going to hit 7 times, but it costs 99 MP. But guys, let me tell you, if you can get that spirit up there, these moves actually hit really hard. And just like I'm saying with Awakened Rain. So you may actually find yourself using this. Next up, let's look at her healing ability. She has Fairy Healing, which restores 100% HP to one ally. Again, can cast her skills twice in one turn. So this is going to be a great, great ability. Remember Benediction on Estrola and how good it was? Well, you're going to be able to cast this twice in one turn or cast this with another ability, it looks like. So that's going to be very good for you. Uh, a lot of these tanks, once they get to 7 star, they're going to be beefy. Wilhelm's going to have even a bigger mustache, and he's going to have a lot of HP to get through if he does take a lot of hits. So Fairy Healing is going to get you there in one shot, which is going to be awesome. Her other 
other healing ability is Fairy Light. Heal 2,500 HP 18 times to all allies. That's going to be excellent. Uh, that's just going to be your AoE uh, curing ability. Uh, similar to Kuraja, it's going to do a lot of healing that way. It can be cast twice in a turn. So those are our healing abilities. Next up, she has Raise Dead, which is her, uh, you know, if an allies KO'd, you're going to be able to bring him back. And it's 100%, so full life can be cast twice in a turn. I'm going to keep saying that just so you guys make sure you understand this can happen. Because I know, um, the you know, the dual white magic cast isn't going to be working here. You're going to be needing to use for everything. You're going to be using Hasten Speech, which is her passive. Next up, she has this an incredible ability right here. Cure, Sleep, Silence, Poison, Petrify, Disease, Confuse, Blind for all allies, but also uh, gets rid of Stop. So stop is something that will come hindering you sometime soon. I'm sure they're going to be adding it to a lot more trials, at least a couple of them, and you are going to be needing to look out for stop. One of the great things about her, we're going to scroll down here, is in martial arts knowledge, she has an ability called Use Wind the Clock, which means she's 100% resist to stop. Now, I did look on the Reddit uh, unit info page. I did look on XVS DBJP version to see if this is a global buff, and I do believe it is. I have not found that passive on any of them. Now, I may be looking in the wrong places. I am a JP noob, but I didn't see that anywhere. So that is going to be great. Remember, it's cast at the start of battle. I do believe it's going to cast on her if she dies. She doesn't have it when she comes back, so that's important. But that's going to allow her to not be stopped and then get rid of stop on everyone else if that is a, a thing that happens to you. So that's a, a great, a great ability there. Next up, we're going to be talking about these two abilities right here. They've been buffed up from the JP version of the game. Power up and guard. Increase attack 150% for five turns. Increase defense 150% for five turns. So that, and also, again, this is one of the global buffs, like I just said. It's buffed up quite a bit from the JP version. 150% is a lot of status, goodness, being put on your chainers. Again, it can be cast twice in one turn. So you can give defense to Willy and give your chainer 150% or give both chainers, including yours and a friend, perhaps, 150% buff for five turns it's not like it's a two turn thing five turns that's forever that's amazing um but she doesn't forget about her magic tanks either she increases spirit 80 percent for five turns to all allies so that's everybody and then she also can mitigate damage uh magic damage taken 20 percent for all allies for five turns again that that is incredible that is an extremely high turn rate on these things and the, and the damage mitigation is actually going to be quite key uh, so those are all of her abilities and what she can do in her kit. Let's look at her passives. She has 10% chance of evading physical attacks, and I know your degenerates out there are already trying to think about her with I, Nicole, making her your support, healer, buffer, physical damage, evade tank, AoE cover person. And I like what you're doing now. I like it. I commend you. If you do that, that's going to be sweet. She has spirit and defense 30%. She does have the ignore fatal damage 100% when HP is above 30%, which is an incredible passive for sure to have on your re-razor, uh, on your razor, excuse me, or when you're a healer, because those are the ones that really, if they die and you have no way of getting them back up, it's a wipe. Well, she's going to resist that, so that's that's really good. Uh, moving on back down to Martial Arts Knowledge, she gets 50% Spirit and HP 30% with a Fist in her hand. Um, that could be her own Fist, that could be Aegean uh, Fist, which we'll talk about in a minute because we do want to be casting her Limit Burst quite often. Uh, and that gives her a little bit more survivability along with a little bit more damage. She uh, increases her Resist to Paralyze, but then also has Wind the Clock that increases Stop uh, Resist, but that is cast at the start of battle. You can notice the difference between these two. This one doesn't say start of battle, so this is forever. Um, then she has Healing Light. She has uh, Gain Regen, which uh, is just like, I guess she's going to be gaining HP uh, uh, per turn. She has Increased Limit Burst Gauge 2 per turn. And that's a passive, guys. So she's getting that every single turn. Her limit burst gauge is going up by two. And you guys can look down here. Her limit burst is only 20. So it's not the highest in the world. It's not that out of reach. And she recovers MP. Incredible. Let's look at this limit burst because it has been buffed from the JP version. The first thing I want to say is the JP version was single target. So this is all AoE now. So that take a think about that. Single target to all AoE. How That's a huge buff. That's a huge buff. And then uh, we can also see that there is a little bit of nerf buff in here. The um, maxed out Angel Feather used to be like, I think, 154% buff to attack, defense, magic, and spirit. But again, that was for one unit. Now we have an AoE at 134%. So what does this limit burst do for us with uh, Rena? It turns her essentially into a bard. She's going to remove attack, defense, magic, and spirit debuffs from all allies. And you guys know you run into that quite often in Trials. She's going to increase all of those stats by 134% for three turns of all allies. And then she's going to do the bard thing. It restore HP every turn, restore MP every turn, which is incredible. So again, if she can equip this, we put the Age on in her hand. She's already getting this limit burst gauge filled up. We put a high tide dagger maybe in the other hand, maybe like a dual wielding dagger in the other. Can she equip daggers? Please. Yes! Okay, so you take your high tide dagger that you guys got from the item world, throw that into her hand, 
And she is a machine, guys. She will be a machine. She will be getting the slimmer burst up. She'll be doing everything your buffer was doing before. She'll be also be able to heal and be your, uh, and also be able to be your healer and your razor. Let's talk about a couple of things that do hold her back, though. There are two things she's missing here in her kit. So think about it for a minute. I'm gonna give you a chance. What do you think they are? All right. So I'm gonna tell you. She doesn't have re-raise, and re-raise is very big. A lot of, you know, Ayaka, CG Fina, we need the re-raise on these units. Uh, some of the trials, I'm even using re-raise now. Re-raise is very, very, very good, and she has nowhere in her kit for her to do that. The second one is MP regeneration on command. Now, while she still has it in her kit, which is awesome, as we can see down here with the MP regeneration off of her limit burst, <clears throat> it's not always going to be on command, and that may be a problem in the future, and you may have to find somewhere in your kit of units in your team to have an MP on command uh, unit. Perhaps not. When you build her the way I'm talking about, she may just get her limit burst by turn two and just have it up forever. You know, I, I, I don't know. I haven't got to play around with the unit. So overall, since we have announced that we are getting a seven star for Reyna, I'm going to give her a solid nine out of ten. She is an amazing healer. She brings a lot of stuff to the table. While she may be missing re-raise um, and the... Uh, MP on command, she does cover a, a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. So again, we have no idea what her seven star is going to be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume it's going to be fantastic. So be on the lookout for Reyna. She, if you guys don't have a uh, five star base healer yet, you can go for her. Very, very good unit. I say that's pretty damn good. All right, guys. So in the end here, should you pull on this banner? Well. The odds have gone way, way up that you should be pulling because they do have seven stars coming out in the future. They have announced that in the game now. Fate seems almost, I'm going to say, almost unfixable unless they cha change those frames or they give him a better chaining move or they let him equip throwing weapons. I don't think they can do that in seven star upgrade. Who knows? I mean, he needs he needs a major overhaul, in my opinion, to be really good. But Reno, on the other hand, is going to be stellar. She's already stellar. So if you don't have a healer, again, if you don't have a great healer, go for this banner. Remember, it is limited time. You can only get him right now. <clears throat> You're going to need two of them for a seven star. And, um, you know, Rena is just going to be very good to begin with. So we're just going to, we got to be pretty excited about that. If you're not going to well out on this banner, if because you're scared of the double five star base, uh, if, you know, fate's kind of a dud, <clears throat> do some dailies or something, guys. Do some dailies. Again, you can farm up some of these. Roddick has a great TMR. Uh, if you get Reyna or fate, their TMRs are very good as well. So then you can get them through the raid anyway. And they are all very, very, very well designed units. They look incredibly uh, cute. Uh, colorful. They 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 definitely hold true to their actual characters. So overall, I'd say you know free to play players do what you want. Use some tickets. Uh, summon every uh every couple of summons there for the dolphins. If you're missing out on a very very good healer, rain is going to get you covered. So I'd go a little bit ham if you can. Uh, and then whales, of course, we're going to get going for it. So hey, I mean, what am I going to say to you? I mean, this banner isn't dog shit because they're going to be getting seven stars and STMRs. Remember that whales. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you're pulling for these units and if you think fate can be fixable at seven star and then subscribe for future content we'll catch you guys in the next video